everybody, we're here with CEO of Asata, Atta de Vries, and we're going to be talking about NDC or the new distribution capability. Thanks so much for joining us today, Atta. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me, Sarah. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so NDC is a real catchphrase in the industry at the moment. Maybe you could tell our viewers what it is all about and how it evolved. Sure. So look, I think there's a lot of uncertainty and, um, and, and, and confusion which has developed over the years as we've acknowledged and seen that NDC in terms of its principal intent has continued to shift and change as well. So NDC was first announced by the airlines through IATA probably in 2012. Um, and it was quite evident at the time that whilst they were talking about it becoming um, a standard for shopping purposes that it was about this intermediating the uh, travel agents and DDS channels as the airlines were grappling to try to take back control of the distribution of their content and products. Um, I think that that evolved through engagements with the trade, including the GDSs, uh, into what was then advised as an industry standard for communication. And the principles there was, and the thinking behind it was for the airlines to be able to uh, share disintermediate, well, share and, 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 and distribute all of their different content and offerings through all of the channels uh, which they wished to distribute that content. So the thinking was whether you visited an airline's website or whether you booked through the GDS um, or through any other channel, the content that you were getting was consistent. And the other important component is, of course, that the airlines are taking back full control of that content and um, what is uh, the pricing and the terms and conditions attached to it. So there was quite a lot of enthusiasm to some extent. Obviously, for the GDSs, it remained a concern because we noted, obviously, that fees were starting to be introduced um, for airline content to be distributed. They were minimizing the amount of content and the value of the content through the GDSs, all as a measure to try to push and encourage additional um, direct bookings through whatever NDC channel they had developed. Um, so for the GDSs, it remains a challenge, but you, we have seen them also put in a huge amount of effort in developing and preparing the GDS for NDC uh, standard. The problem, however, is as we now note and see airlines physically rolling out uh, some of their own direct NDC strategies, um, they are not consistent. So what's happened is airlines are starting to use parts of NDC as a standard to choose what products and through what channels they want to distribute it, which makes it quite difficult because if everybody has a different NDC strategy, it's very difficult to still call it a standard. Um, and as we've always enjoyed this aggregation of content through the GDSs, the real danger now is that that content is going to be um, increasingly, um, um, how can I put it, um, confusing for agents to find as the content differs from airline to airline and access to that content will differ uh, from airline to airline. So we're going to see, I believe, a very, very long and protracted um, confusing phase in terms of how agents are going to access and sell airline content. Sure. Um, and how important is this for agents in the South African market um, to get involved with NDC right now? Is this something that is for the future or is this something that they should be involved with at the moment? Well, look, I think it depends on your commercial partnerships with different airlines. So there are airlines out there that are embracing NDC and are having very, very deep investments in ensuring that they are shifting the way that they distribute their sales and their content using NDC as a, uh, as a standard. So it very much depends on uh, which airline and it depends on the nature of your relationship with that airline. Within the South African context, uh, we are not sure at this stage to what extent South African-based carriers have chosen to invest uh, in NDC strategies. I know that SAA was not focusing on it at the time for obvious reasons. Whether that strategy under the new SAA version 2.0 may change, time will tell, but it's certainly not a short-term strategy for them. There may be other airlines that have progressed it further. I know that Comair was doing some work, but again, they're under business rescue, and so we're not really sure where that's going to play out. So it will be a more protracted timeline, there's no doubt, but I think that 
there is a, a very serious commitment from the airline industry broadly to introduce NDC as a standard to start distributing, taking back control of the distribution of their content. You mentioned um, the role of the GDS earlier um, and GDS surcharges. Can you maybe tell our viewers what that is all about and how it is affecting the industry? So I think the nature of the relationship with the GDSs is, is going to change fundamentally. The model as we have known it, where um, the GDSs were charging a fee to the airlines to distribute their content, has already started to shift to certain airlines charging the GDSs to offer the content. Um, so that is one of the first big changes and those costs cannot be absorbed. So somewhere along the line, it has to move through the value chain. So I believe that what's possibly going to happen is we're going to see uh, possibly uh, the GDS is shifting from a channel of revenue to a cost for the agent in order to access content. In turn, it will therefore be imperative that the GDSs are driving real value in the offering of the content that they will be presenting to the agent. So I think we're going to see a very, very fundamental shift. The GDSs will continue to be a very, very strong aggregator and a disseminator of content. I think it will expand well beyond the airline space. I think that they will do a lot to drive NDC and to meet their airline partners' content requirements. Uh, but that will be a long and, and, and arduous road as they move through that. But all the GDSs have committed to the development and all of them have begun the process and are at different stages of testing those NDC standards on their platforms. So yes, I think just the nature of the relationship is going to change, the commercial relationship is going to change, but the GDSs will still remain a very, very important tool for travel agents as part of the way that they access and then distribute uh, airline sales and other content. Thank you, Atta. That was a really great summation of quite a complex um, subject and just, you know, tackling the distribution channel. Thank you for talking to us. Really Absolute great. pleasure. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. Have a nice day.